offer you the power of the greatest of all the gods, the father of Olympus. I offer you the power of these nuts. I am an uncultured heathen, a disgrace of a gamer, and I want to change that. I have enormous blind spots in my experience of gaming's most outstanding achievements. In my formative years, I spent way too much time replaying Fallout New Vegas, Call of Duty, or Twisted Metal to broaden my horizons, so I have a lot to catch up on. The journey of a thousand games must start somewhere, right? So why not with a certified classic? Let's talk about God of War. Released in 2005 for the PlayStation 2, God of War is an action-adventure game set in a fictional ancient Greece. It follows the journey of Kratos, a vengeful Spartan warrior condemned to serve the gods of Olympus until they forgive him of his terrible past. Kratos must stop the God of War Ares from taking the city of Athens using a variety of weapons, tools, and powers to destroy everything in his path. God of War was heralded upon release as one of the greatest action-adventure games ever, receiving near-perfect reviews and countless awards. Many reviewers noted that the game's story, combat, and settings were head and shoulders above anything else available at the time. Due to its universal critical acclaim and massive commercial success, God of War has since become the progenitor of a beloved series of games spawning countless sequels. It has also inspired a slew of other games to shamelessly ripped off. It's a good sign for something to be knocked off as much as God of War has, and yet still so few can match its quality. I'm not one to trust big corporate game review sites though, they're icky and I don't like them, so it's time for me to decide for myself if God of War lives up to the hype, or if it's just another mediocre game that got too much credit for being first. Make sure to like and subscribe and all that shit. If you like what I do here, it goes a long way in motivating me to keep making more of it. God of War ushers you into a fantasy ancient Greek world where all the monsters, myths, and mayhem are conspiring against Kratos and his journey to clear himself of his terrible past. The gameplay has three primary flavors, combat, puzzles, and platforming. In my opinion, it nails those first two, the combat is intense, satisfying, and visceral. The puzzles are intuitive, fun, and balanced. The platforming, on the other hand, is at best serviceable. I'll discuss each gameplay component in more detail, but first I want to get platforming out of the way because it's by far the weakest aspect of this game. It's not even Kratos' movement or control that makes the platforming not as good as it should be. Kratos controls phenomenally. It's the camera that's the problem. God of War features a fixed camera perspective. This means the player has absolutely no say in what the camera does during gameplay. In many ways, this is brilliant for combat and puzzle solving, as the camera will almost always be in a place that allows you to get the most out of encounters or find solutions to puzzles. If the developers are competent, giving them complete control of the camera means they can communicate important information in subtle yet effective ways throughout the game. This is true here, except for the platforming sections. See, your controls are tied to the camera. When you move the stick, Kratos will move in that direction relative to the camera's position. So if the camera shifts or changes while you move, you have to compensate immediately for the camera's new position to keep yourself on track. The camera can make things needlessly difficult when fine movement and adjustments are needed. Throughout the game, obstacles such as balance beams or moving platforms require precise and steady maneuvering. When the camera moves as you work on one of those obstacles, it can cause you to move in ways that you didn't expect and either fall to your death or force you to redo sections of a level. For the most part though, the camera is not an issue, despite not having any control over it, but there are clear limitations. Walking through a doorway only to abruptly change the camera to the next room can be jarring as you try to reacquire your bearings. Those moments are few and far between though. The camera is a valuable cinematic, storytelling, and communication tool in God of War, more than an annoyance. In terms of puzzles, God of War struck a perfect balance with its design, in my opinion. They aren't so easy that your mind goes numb every time you're asked to press a giant button on the floor, but they're also not so obtuse and confusing that you spend 36 hours trying to figure it out until you're forced to Google a walkthrough, only to realize the solution is something you would have never tried, even if you spend the next decade trying. The game understands the puzzles are there to offer a contrast from the bloodshed, so that the game isn't just mashing the square button for six straight hours. The combat is excellent, to be sure, 
but the ebb and flow of slicing up baddies before taking a moment to consider a room to figure out a puzzle makes for a more complete and engaging experience for the player. The only times I got stuck on a puzzle for more than a few minutes was not because the solution was unintuitive or impossibly obtuse. It was because I'm an idiot. For instance, there was a section early on where a gate opens only as long as you hold a button down. You don't have enough time to run past the gate before it shuts, so you need to find something to hold the button down. In that room, there are no crates or other objects that you can move only a minotaur and a box to replenish your magic. I got distracted killing the minotaur, and when he was slain, another spawned in his place. Rinse and repeat for about five minutes. I started to wonder how many minotaurs I had to fight to progress. It turns out the minotaur and magic crate would respawn indefinitely, because to solve the puzzle, you have to use Medusa's head to freeze the minotaur while he is standing on the button. It was extremely simple, but my bloodlust got the better of me. One of the most important aspects of this game that the puzzles in combat share is that your actions have immediate and tangible effects. Whether you're swinging your signature blades, pulling a lever, performing a devastating combo, or turning a dial, you are instantly shown the results. During combat, you feel connected to Kratos in an engaging and visceral way. During puzzles, there's no guesswork over what you just did. It's invaluable for games to empower players to give them as much tactile and visual feedback as possible. God of War understands that need perfectly. Running, jumping, and moving massive stone blocks is cool and all, but we know the star of the show is the innumerable ways you can tear the forces of Ares asunder. I won't beat around the bush here, fighting enemies in this game feels so fucking good and you are given an arsenal of damage-dealing tools to shred your foes throughout your journey. Most importantly, you have Kratos' signature Blades of Chaos. These beefy, dual-wield swords are the bread and butter of your time with this game. There's also the Blade of Artemis, another massive sword that swings slower than your Blades of Chaos, but dishes out significantly more damage per hit. In addition to your weapons, you also have powers granted to you by the gods of Olympus to aid in your travels. Poseidon's rage will send an explosive shockwave around you that devastates anything in its path. Medusa's head will freeze anyone with her gaze, leaving them vulnerable to an instant kill attack. Zeus's lightning bolt offers a long-range solution for those pesky enemies who are beyond the reach of your swinging blades. And finally, the army of Hades will summon the souls of the underworld to fight on your side. While you are not drowning in a sea of weapons, armor, and abilities that spoil you for choice, I feel that the tools available to the player, while limited, are perfect for the experience. Forcing you to use the Blades of Chaos as your primary source of damage for most of the game allows you to develop mastery and get intimately familiar with them. It's infinitely more satisfying and rewarding to feel yourself getting more powerful and skilled with a weapon than for the game to offer so many weapons and abilities that you can't spend more than five minutes with one without feeling like you're missing out on something better. Better in God of War means you get better, not just the stats on your equipment. As you upgrade your weapons and powers, they are given new abilities and effects which turn the Blades of Chaos into extremely versatile tools of destruction. The menu of combos and ways they can be used, and the mixing and matching of moves and attacks, provide a deep well of ways to dispatch your foes. You can do simple light and heavy attacks and their associated combos, but as you continue to upgrade your power, you unlock even more ways to use them. Depending on what the situation calls for, you can use the Blades of Chaos to stun enemies, toss them in the air, tear them apart with a buzzsaw-like strike, or drop a bomb from the top rope, sending a concussive blast erupting in every direction. Every move is satisfying and crunchy to pull off. Combining all of that with the powers granted to Kratos by the gods, you're left with an endlessly fun and rewarding combat system. Monsters will recoil and burst into chunks of gore as you slice, crush, and mangle them beneath your vengeful fury. Kratos and his iconic blades are all the weapons you need to defeat Ares forces, and they are fun the entire time. There are plenty of trends in gamings that I just can't stand, and one that goes under the radar is how so many modern games put an enormous emphasis on vomiting a bunch of loot at players and forcing them to sift through the junk to find the one with the highest number. While it might get your dopamine pumping to see your new sword or gun has 1.5% more damage than your last one, it completely removes the player's personal, intimate connection to the tools they interact with during gameplay. That's a long way of saying that I appreciate that God of War keeps its arsenal simple, giving each item more significance. 
God of War embodies the power fantasy experience of a great hack and slash title. It doesn't take long to get a good feel for the controls and rhythm of the combat and start to feel like a badass. In every possible way, Kratos is meant to personify the most brutal, vicious, and primal of emotions. He doesn't hide behind dozens of pounds of armor and clothing. He wears almost nothing except a loincloth and sandals. He's animalistic, and his animations reinforce that. He hunches over, seething with rage, before letting loose his smooth and gruesome wrath. It's not hard to feel powerful while playing as Kratos. David Jaffe constantly stressed the importance of Kratos being more brutal during development, and it shows. On the topic of difficulty, I got through a good portion of the game by just mashing the square button, but that doesn't mean there isn't depth to the combat. During the later levels and the bonus Challenge of the Gods mode, the combat becomes more demanding, and that's where it really shines. Learning the proper timing of dodging and attacking, and which attacks are best for a given enemy, offers complexity and satisfaction to the gameplay. It's worth noting that I played through the game on the normal difficulty. I didn't dare to touch the god mode. The challenge of the gods was all that I can handle. Speaking of which, the challenge of the gods is a mode that becomes available after you complete the story for the first time. It's a series of 10 challenges that, in my opinion, are best described as fermented cyclops shit in a jar. Everything that makes the rest of the game iconic and great is gone. It's not polished, it's not balanced, it exposes and exaggerates the game's flaws and forces you to overcome them while it laughs at you. The only option is to resort to cheap tactics when available. And what did I get for my effort? Some costumes for Kratos to wear. Those are actually pretty sick though, not gonna lie. For the game's duration, you're not just ripping apart featureless drones, you're faced with hordes of Ares minions as they attempt to stop you. Many of your foes are the game's loose interpretation of familiar beasts and monsters from Greek mythology. God of War is not rigidly tied to making everything as faithful as possible to Greek myth lore. The developers allowed themselves to take creative liberties in their design, and the final product was much better for that. It feels like its own world. Every enemy is oozing with character, charm, and personality. From the stumbling undead legionnaires, to the stout minotaurs, to the elusive gorgon assassins, and the many adversaries you meet throughout the game. Each one is highly detailed, expressive, and distinct in their movement, designs, and strategies needed to take them down. They are all instantly recognizable to their Greek myth counterparts, but given a unique spin. During the game, you'll explore locations and areas that span the gambit of Greek mythology, from a wrecked ship in the Aegean Sea, the crumbling streets of Athens as it falls under siege from Ares, a sprawling desert with swirling sands, an ancient temple straddling the back of a scorned titan forever punished by the gods, and spires of flesh and bone rising from the river Styx at Hades itself. This game is gorgeous, even though some levels and enemies are grotesque and upsetting to look at. In my opinion, God of War may be the best looking PlayStation 2 game, not only in visual fidelity, but also in the quality of its art and animations. Each environment feels distinct and is overflowing with thoughtful details and layouts no space feels wasted, and exploring throughout the game remains rewarding. Whether it's spelunking for crates containing phoenix feathers or gorgon eyes to increase my magic and health pools, solving puzzles to progress the story, or just sheer curiosity carrying me into the next room to see what's there. I was excited to see as much of the world in this game as possible. The artists have built environments that consistently nail the atmosphere and emotion that brings this game to the next level. Everything has this sense of grandeur and scale. I was slightly disappointed with the boss fights though. The fight against the Hydra at the beginning gave me this expectation that there would be more equally impressive boss battles. However, there are only a couple of other times that you face a true boss. Pandora's Guardian was fine. The final boss was a ball-crushing challenge to be sure, but in concept, I can't imagine a better way to end the game. So on the whole, the bosses were just okay. But I know in later games, the boss battles became a bit of a selling point. But enough gushing about the gameplay, it's time to talk story. I will discuss the story in some detail, so if you're trying to avoid spoilers for God of War, this will be your warning. God of War follows the journey of Kratos a vengeful warrior condemned to serve the gods in hope of ridding his mind of the horrific visions of his past. Once a decorated and feared captain of the Spartan army, Kratos found himself on the business end of a barbarian force that was too much, even for him. Facing death, he called upon the god of war Ares to spare his men and grant him the power he would need to slay his enemies, all for the low, low cost of… himself. 
From that moment, he would pledge his life to the service of Ares, becoming his loyal subject and made to carry out his will. Kratos received the strength of a god, including the Blades of Chaos, which were permanently attached to his wrists as a brand of his allegiance. He then waged war at the behest of Ares, who desired to mold Kratos into the perfect warrior, eventually leading an attack on a village occupied by worshippers of Athena, Ares' sister and divine rival. Unknown to Kratos, Ares had secretly transported his wife and daughter to the village, where Kratos accidentally killed them amid his blind fury. Ares believed this would free Kratos to help him become the perfect warrior. He felt like his family held him back. The horrified and saddened Spartan instead renounced his pledge of servitude to the god and swore vengeance against him. Following that, the oracle of the destroyed village cursed Kratos by bonding the ashes of his dead family to his skin turning it ash white and earning him the nickname Ghost of Sparta. Plagued by nightmares of this horrible deed, Kratos vowed to serve the other gods, hoping to rid himself of those visions. The gods of Olympus promise they will forgive him if he agrees to work for them. At the start of the game, Kratos has been serving them for 10 years, but Athena offers him one final task. If he succeeds, he will be forgiven. The only thing standing between him and separating himself from what haunts him is stopping Ares from taking Athens. It's a simple setup and narrative, but it's brilliant. It serves as a perfect epic odyssey for Kratos to undertake. His motives are straightforward and easy to root for. And I love Kratos as a character. I was concerned going in that he would just be some dumb brute who only communicates in grunts and punches, that he would be the cringe mid-2000s idea of a rad, tough guy with no meaningful story or emotion. In later games, I know that Kratos would see his character grow and develop and expose his layers, flaws, and depth. However, I believe that even in this first appearance, his story is impactful and emotionally resonates, despite being relatively simple. He comes off as a cold, uncaring monster driven by unbridled bloodlust. Still, it's clear that there is some humanity buried within. Kratos seems to welcome his reputation as fury manifest in human form, but the real monsters are the gods. Ares deceive Kratos into cutting down his own family. And then, seeing an opportunity, the other gods of Olympus notice Kratos renouncing his service to Ares and offered to help him so long as he devoted himself to them instead. The gods of Olympus are no better than Ares. Ares is just more open about his corruption. And I adore this about God of War. It takes all the familiar aspects of Greek mythology and interprets it in its own way. The gods are not benevolent, altruistic deities who exist without flaws. Instead, they are self-interested and manipulative. Kratos is not a hero, but it's clear that the gods are the villains. Though we mourn the death of our brother, the gods are indebted to you. We promised your sins would be forgiven, and so they are. But we never promised to take away your nightmares. It's not the most extraordinary story ever told or anything, at least not in this iteration of it. But for someone like me who doesn't know everything about Greek mythology besides the you know, cursory stuff that most people know, but it's an engaging and fascinating narrative that challenges the expectations I had for what the Greek gods represent. Aside from the main story, this world does feel rich and detailed. During the Pandora's Temple section of the game, a subplot plays out as you uncover the different rooms and sectors of the temple in search of Pandora's box. The temple's chief architect, Pathos Verdes III, I hope I pronounced that right, left notes throughout the structure that become increasingly unhinged and express his growing madness. Early in the temple, he leaves simple messages about what lies ahead, but further in, he questions his own loyalty to the gods. They have asked so much of him, but is it ever enough? It feels like a poignant parallel to what Kratos is going through. Like Pathos Verdes III, the ghost of Sparta's work for the gods has cost him his family and threatens to take even more from him, all in the name of loyalty. Altogether, God of War is a beautifully crafted experience that offers intense, visceral combat within a richly detailed and gorgeous world. Every environment feels distinct and thoughtfully designed, filled to the brim with exciting characters, lore, and puzzles that keep you locked in and engaged for the entire run of the game. From start to finish, this feels like a near-perfect game except for Challenge of the Gods. And so that's my review of God of War for the PlayStation 2. More than likely, I'll jump into the sequel next, but in the meantime, tell me what you think in the comments below. I hope you find the people, things, and activities around you that make you happy, healthy, and kind. Your darkest moments don't define you, and there's always a tomorrow. I'll catch you next time. Have a nice day.